นโมทัสสะปะโกอทุอะระหะทุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะปะโกอทุอะระหะทุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมทัสสะปะโกอทุอะระหะทุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะ Last time I talk, talking about importance of to know with clarity both theory and practice, and in there we emphasize more on the insights, thirteen stages of insight. Okay, to experience these insight, one has to develop. <coughs> Strong and powerful, five controlling mental faculties: p e n c h a i n d r i a p a l a Only when you have these strong and firm five controlling mental faculties, you will experience these thirteen stages of insight with clarity. As we all know, these thirteen, uh, five controlling mental faculties are faith and confidence, effort, energy, mindfulness, and concentration, and wisdom. The last one is wisdom, and in fact, under that wisdom. These thirteen stages of insights fall into it. So that part or word, p i n y a or wisdom, is used quite freely and liberally along the scriptures. Sometimes you will see the word p i n y a we call it wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom. Sometimes we use the word n y a n a Okay, the same thing: knowledge, wisdom, intelligence. So it's a large spectrum falls under it. <coughs> and in fact, to to reach the goals, we reach the whole spectrum of these insights or wisdoms. So let's see this whole series, the whole spectrum, what they fall under. You can first call this this p i n y a and here is um, knowledge of cognition, or cognizing, or remembering. More of a accurately cognizing <clears throat> something, or some objects, or events, or situation, with their characteristics and marks. Okay. As an example, to look at it, every one of us has this kinds of intelligence or knowledge. Opinion. Okay. Let's say someone drive through many times, so pass through. We know the boundary road. Okay, and you come to cognize that boundary road. Okay, whenever you come to that boundary road, oh, this is boundary road. On the east side of the boundary rope is Burnaby. West side is Vancouver. That is the kind of knowledge, okay, cognizing through its characteristics. Whether you are educated or not educated, you will come to know that. Second Narrows Bridge, you go through many times. 
you cognize through its characteristics. On the north side is North Vancouver, the west side is, uh, south side is Vancouver. And eventually, you come to know and it becomes a part of you. In other words, that cognizing through its marks and characteristics and when it comes a part of you, you have that knowledge, intelligence or wisdom, whatever you like to name it. And that doesn't need any education. You just have to be a human being and then through your experience you come to know or collect these informations. Okay. Some people are they are really good with faces, okay, facial features. And through these faces they remember a lot of people these features. Some people are better than the other. Or some people are they are good at observing the head shapes or height or colors or faces and so on. And through that you collect many, many information. And once you got these informations, once it becomes a part of you, it gives you a certain function. It gives a certain degree of power over the others who doesn't have it. That's what the information on knowledge or wisdom, the function is. It has a certain usage and if you have that, you have the power or edge over others. That is pinya or jnana. But this is true cognizing the characteristics and marks and it become a part of you, you own it. That's one kind of pinya, through cognition. And the next one, another kind of pinya is through memorizing. Okay, through memorizing. This one, a certain people are better than the other. Through memorizing. As an example, especially the older generation will come to know. When we are young, we have to memorize tables. Yeah. Two, two, seven, four, two, three, seven, six, or five, six, seven, thirty, five, ten, seven, fifty, five, twelve, sixty, and so on. We have to really memorize it. We have to learn by heart all these tables so that it can be used in arithmetic when we solve the arithmetical problems, arithmetics problem. That is another kind of pinya through memorization. And some people memorize a sutra or verses, poem. Some are better than the other. Some they can't memorize at all. Okay. They try very hard. Or in fact, they might have to try about a month to memorize a poem. And at the same time, another person might only need one hour to memorize it. So it varies from one person to the other. But regardless, when a person memorizes something, whether it's the tables or the poems or sutra or a formula, when it becomes a part of that person, okay, that person has the power or edge over others who doesn't have it. And that's what binya gives. That's what knowledge gives. That's what intelligence gives the person who possessed it. It must be a part of it. Nowadays, it's not that children are not that popular with memorization, especially in this computer age. Everything is pressing, knowing how to and which button to press. 
So they don't memorize that much anymore. This kind of knowledge become less and less in this the youngest generation. But in the olden days, we have, and even in regions, Asians use that method of memorization a lot more than the Western people. But regardless, that is another kind of pinya or knowledge or wisdom, intelligence that you gain through memorization. Just, that is another. And then there's another kind of pinya or insight or wisdom. What it is is uh, whatever you memorize it, okay, the part that you have memorized, you begin to understand the inner workings of what you have memorized. Before at the tables you just know by heart. Later you know how this 12, 12, 144, how you get it you really understand how this 12 multiplied by 12 equal to 144 in details, inside out, how it functions, how it works. In other words, it knows how this arises and comes to be. It knows whatever situation, condition, project, in a many different ways how it comes to be. You have the in-depth understanding of it. You have the penetrative understanding of it, of the of the problem or of any objects. That kind of understanding. So in there there's a lot of analysis, reasoning logic based on the subject. These kind of tools come in and you can penetrate into the situation or object or a problem and you understand it. Not only the routinely written down like a robot doing exactly as instructed, not that way. You can see this way in and out, upside down, sideways, or even many alternatives way of approach. That is another kind of pinya. Okay, this pinya or wisdom is through knowing penetratively of a situation or a problem. So there are now three kinds of pinya now. You know these things. And then Father, you go on. Father, you go on is, it is within the same field, within the same field, depending on how much information and how much intelligent intellectual power come in. What happens is, you look at a situation when you look at the situation, you see all the intricacies. Okay? Some people look at this situation and he has to figure out for about a, a week to understand. But finally it figure out, become the master of that problem. Another person a day, some person, they just look at it. Within a few minutes, they see the whole thing with clarity that kind of thing. That kind of thing is um, the other intelligence is through knowing in details. This one is also knowing in details but from outside point of view it is more like an intuition. It's intuition or automatically the answer fall on his or her lap. You look at it and voila, there's an answer. But it is not that 
something is given out to or there's an intuition, guesswork. But they are mind works in such a way whenever you see a situation or a problem, it is such a clarity and instantly the answer is there. It looks like instantly. But it is not. The answer doesn't fall from the sky. It's from these various information that you have collected through cognition, through memorization, through penetrative. And at the same time, it is just how the structure of the brain of that person works. They can walk at very fast speed. Okay, just like now we say, computer, you press, there's an answer, that kind of a thing. You look at it, and for everybody, it's such a mess. And that person can see the mess but instantly with the answer, the correct, precise answer. Of course, from the modern scientific point of view, it's a brain is work in such a way, okay, they can function a lot. From the Buddhist point of view, yes, that person has that brain structure in such a way, but why not all other people has too? They don't. And from the Buddhist point of view is that person has practiced and developed the wisdom or pursuit of truth for eons and eons of life, try to become specialized in it. And that it has come to the maturity to that level in this life. That kind of wisdom is achieved. Again, too, the brain works in a very great speed, like a computer, but that one is not accidental. It has to put a lots and lots of, not hours or years, lives after lives of the practice or for the pursuit of truth and knowledge. And that is also another pinya. So some people say that is a, there's a Pali words and stuff like that. Jane Dominique. In other words, you just think about it and there goes the answer. That kind of, for other people, it's more like a miracle. But actually, it is a hard work that person has put for so many eons of lives in the pursuit of this truth or wisdom. Okay. So those are still in the Lokya. And then there is suddenly another Pinya. Okay. This one is as we are directly engaged. And that with the practice, we can call it by name we call insight, okay? vipassana insight, or vipassana jnana. Okay? This jnana or this wisdom is specifically for this vipassana practitioner. But at the same time, all these things, the one that we have discussed earlier, to the various level, except for the last one or two, at the super speed of finding the problem. That kind of background is also required. You have to have a cognition intelligence, memorizing intelligence to a certain level, rationalization, penetrative investigation, things like that. And then here is experiential about the nama and rupa, mind and matter. And then go through the various stages of insight. And that is also pinya. This pinya is called vipassana jnana. Vipassana is the vipassana is insight and jnana. It's also insight or pinya. It falls under that five controlling mental faculties. That is pinya. And when you have that pinya or wisdom, you really understand the true nature of mind and matter. 
regardless how smart and intelligent with all the other knowledge and wisdom this one those instantly one who can have an answer in a split second even those people do not understand this this is a specialized field but those kind of people if they want to go in they can penetrate a lot faster reach a lot faster of course but still they have to go through the method of developing the five controlling mental faculties and then you will have that intelligence or wisdom vipassana jnana or you can call it vipassana pinya the wisdom or insight through vipassana and then there is another pinya another level it's called mega pinya okay the wisdom associated with the path mega pinya that is over and above the vipassana pinya mega pinya see mega pinya is when you go there you come to understand the same thing nama and rupa in such a way you have gone to that level and you have achieved a consciousness called mega consciousness is a special type of consciousness mega consciousness or path consciousness you have to experience that path consciousness if you do not experience that path consciousness you cannot have this path wisdom okay to be able to experience path consciousness you have to go through and pass the 13 stages of vipassana insight so when you experience this path consciousness you have this path wisdom and again to pick it up whenever there is a wisdom that wisdom give you a certain power a certain leverage or a certain edge over others insight wisdoms they give you take you to the the domain of the noble person and then when this path wisdoms come that path wisdom has the power to eliminate to uproot depending on the level a certain type of suffering each wisdom has a its own function but it is the wisdom that can accomplish it and that is the wisdom that becomes a part of that person and it is only useful for that person other people cannot use it so that is called part wisdom so so there's a whole range of wisdom a whole range of wisdom okay. wisdom through cognition three wisdoms through memorization with us through understanding wisdom through penetrative understanding and wisdom of insights and wisdom of path a whole range and when we said there are five controlling mental faculties the last one is pinya the wisdom under that wisdom all these faults under that wisdom all of these of course depending on what level you are practicing <clears throat> based on the level you are you have a certain kind of wisdom a certain thing will become a part of it so based on what we are talking where we are talking from what level we are talking we are talking about a certain types of intelligence knowledge or wisdom and when you are a possessor of it it gives you a power that what that intelligence can accomplish so in that way 
one need to understand it. Even the monks, first of all, what? They have to memorize things. That's a wisdom sutra. And then later they have to understand it. And then later they have to understand it more penetratively. And there are others. They can understand the same thing in so many different ways that other people haven't thought about it yet. It just comes to them, but not automatically, not instantly is given. It is the workings through the practice. And in Buddhism, one word is very, very useful, bahudli. Repeatedly, 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 whatever you do, never forget that, repeatedly. And when you do repeatedly, it becomes yours. So, when we talk about Benya, understand in that way, based on the level where you are, and when you practice insight too, what? First of all, you have to have a direct contact. And through direct contact, you cognize the marks of Nama and Rupa. There's an intelligence through cognition. And then also, you have to understand the sutra. Some sutra, you have to memorize it. The sting stages of insight, you have to memorize it. Eight full part, you have to memorize it. Five controlling faculties, memorized it. Seven factors of enlightenment, you have to memorize it. And then you read the, from the theory, or you listen to the lectures, and you try to understand the deeper meaning, the deeper meaning. That also is included in there the one who is practicing, cognizing intelligence, memorizing intelligence, knowing intelligence, and then penetrative intelligence. And then eventually all these things come to be. The most important thing is for the practitioner is the precise, direct contact information that accumulate. Repeatedly, when it become a part of you, when it is flowing in your blood, and then have the ability to correlate with the theory, that is the time. Then you become skillful with the insight intelligence, or insight jnana, or mitpinya. Everybody might experience it, they reach it, but some people know a lot better than the other. That doesn't mean that people who doesn't know as much would not go to the next level. It does. All that you have to do is experience. But that some people specialize for the pursuit of that intelligence okay, to upgrade as much as you can, to perfect as much as you can. Those people understand the same thing with a, a lot deeper way, with so many variations and options. Those are the great teachers. Those are the people, okay, Atakata teacher, the great intelligent, knowledgeable monks who reinterpret what the Buddhists mean. Buddha only say a sentence or maybe about eight words, but they try to explain us in a volume so that we could understand these are the kind of people. They pursue lives after lives for this kind of wisdom of intelligence. So in here, we all need it, and, but just to uproot the suffering, if you have a direct experience, that experience become a part of you. You will. But 
To be able to become a great teacher, that's another story. If you remember, the Buddha was teaching about 30 monks. Parable of the locks, the lock flowing down the river. There was a cow herder listening from a distance, but he became a Ariya. So don't think that you have to be a great intellectual to God enlightened. You have enough intelligence to understand, to cognize the truth, then you can. But to be able to become a great teacher, that's another story. It goes the whole spectrum of the wisdom that we just mentioned about. So that is under the pinya. We are dealing here quite detail about it because as we go along our talks, we'll be hearing this word pinya, 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 jnana, 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 insight, wisdom, knowledge. So whatever level, wherever we are talking, correlate on that level and understand it on that level so that we have a clarity about the lectures or the books that we are reading or listening. That's why I'm emphasizing here. Once we got these five controlling mental faculties, we are practicing to become powerful, relevant, or bala. Pencha bala. Penchendriya become pencha bala. Strong and powerful, five controlling mental faculties. To do that, as we said last week, there are these Atakada teachers, the great knowledgeable monks, have laid down nine, okay, nine different factors or nine different groups for us to practice so that to sharpen it. And the first one is inclining our mind towards the cessation of a phenomenon, a process, or an object. Whatever the mind is engaging in, whatever object, whether it's a physical or mental or phenomenon or process or situation or of present moment, you must be able to see the ending of it in a simple word you must be able to see the ending of it or finale of it. That is one of the key things they instruct us. So when we are observing rising movement, rising and then falling, and then we go rising and then falling, if you're simply just doing rising, falling, you can follow the track quite easily. Rising, falling, rising, falling, you can go 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And if you can simply follow that, you can follow it for 15 minutes and you can assess yourself or you can be aware of yourself, how much effort you are putting how much effort you are putting. Now, let's do the same thing. Rising, and then we set the word, incline your mind to the cessation of the object. Or in other words, incline your mind to see the ending of the rising. Okay. Rising, that's the end. Falling, that's the end. Rising, that's the end. Falling, that's the end. And you practice it. The same thing, rising and falling, but emphasis to see or to experience the ending. And you do that for about 10 minutes. 
Now stop and assess it. What level of effort you have to put in in the second method and what level of effort you put in in the first method without emphasizing the cessation. You will see the difference. The latter one, you have to put more effort. If you don't put more effort, you would not see the cessation or you would not see the end of it. So just by inclining the mind towards the cessation of the object, you automatically increase your effort. Without purposely increasing your effort, you automatically increase your effort. Because to be able to experience that ending. So as soon as you increase your effort, what happens? You become more aware you become more aware of that ending, you become more aware of that ending. Which means automatically your mindfulness is becoming stronger and stronger. More awareness, sharp awareness on the ending. And when you have a very sharp awareness of ending all the time because of the effort you put and what is happening as soon as you have a very clear sharp mindfulness on that ending that means your concentration power is also increasing okay? just by inclining your mind to see the cessation of an object or a phenomenon that's all that you do. You just put a little program. I'm going to see the end of the object. Your effort increase. Your mindfulness becomes stronger. Your concentration becomes stronger. Automatically, these arises one after the other. That is the immediate result of inclining the mind to see the cessation of an object. Okay. Let's see, just to give an example, you are introduced to a, someone, a new person in your office. Okay. You say, ah, hi, hello, how are you? Shake hand and walk out. How much do you remember of that person? Okay. Of course you know the person. You have introduced it. You can identify it. You can recommunicate it. But you don't give much attention to it. That's one. Another one is you pay attention. Introduce it. Oh, first and foremost, oh, very good looking fellow or very good-looking woman. Facial features, oh, that's a square shape. The nose are sharply defined, the eyes are quite deep brown, and so on and so forth. You know quite keenly aware of how that person look. Why? You give more attention. Why? You put more effort to give attention. That attention is mindfulness. And because of that, you actually fixed into the eyes, the eye color, fixed into the structure of the face, square or hexagonal or pentagonal. By knowing each features in deeply, that means you are fixed on these objects or points, which means your concentration becomes stronger. Because of that, you have a very precise detailed information with you, which information is intelligence. When you turn around and walk back to your office, 
you have all these things already. Why? You have a high higher effort. Okay? Without being all that you think is you want to know this person better because this person will become important to your life and your workplace. That is the driven, just inclining the mind towards a cessation. You have the intention. This person is important. As soon as you put that program, this person is important to my life, and suddenly everything changes. You pay more attention, you see, you watch, you collect every information. Without intending to do so, you get everything because you set your mind, you incline your mind, your attitudes towards the situation, you change it into a different situation. And that little one thing changes the whole dynamics, effort, concentration, attention, everything, collection of information. You don't have to do one at a time. All that you do is, this person is important, I need to know better. Just like that, to see the cessation of the phenomena, you just incline it and you program it, and everything changes, the whole dynamic changes. See, their suggestion is very simple, incline your mind, but they know exactly what these great teachers intend to, they know what the Buddhists intend to, and they created something and give us to do something, and these are the things that's actually happening, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, running down. Don't underestimate, don't look lightly to the cessation of a phenomenon to incline the mind, but do not chase after that, do not desperately look for it, but have that intention in your mind. If you are chasing, if you are desperately looking, you will be out of sync, you will be in balance, and you won't have any precision, and you will never experience a true cessation. You will have your own imaginative cessation what you think it is, but it is not the true one, if you are desperately looking for it. But it must be in your program. If that's the case, the moment comes, you see, the moments come, you see. When the moment arrives, your effort slightly increase, and then click, click, it goes in. So incline your mind towards the cessation of phenomenon is First and foremost, these are the effect it has. It gives you higher concentration power in your meditation process. That's one. And there's another one. Another one is what we are practicing is Satipatthana, full foundation of mindfulness. We can practice the whole thing without inclining the mind towards a cessation of phenomena. We'll get it, but it will take a, a long, long, long time, a lot longer time to really see the impermanence nature of the object. That's why this great teacher told us to see the cessation of the object. In other words, they are putting you on a shortcut to see the impermanence. See? Uh, the ending, the ending, the ending, the ending. At, after you have struck that ending about a couple of million times, it becomes more and more distinct, more and more distinct. And then suddenly that understanding of impermanence and nicha really become a part of you. 
by inclining your mind, you will see nicha a lot faster than practicing without inclining the mind. The other one, it might take about a year to experience a nicha, and this one, you can experience a nicha within 10 or 14 days. That is another benefit. And that little trigger point is the one that switched right into the vipassana. That's one. Inclining the mind towards a cessation gives you, number one, higher concentration power. Number two, a faster way to reach and understand and experience cessation or nature. These are the ones that they intend to. And that's why in sharpening the five indriya, this one comes first and foremost. And again, too, you see the cessation. There are so many levels of cessation. The whole meditation about, vipassana meditation about, is anicca, dukkha, and anatta. To understand, to experience impermanence, suffering, and non-self. Right at the beginning, you understand in a certain way, memorizing the words or trying to understand theoretically. <clears throat> and through that, it becomes the more you read, the more you discuss, the clearer and clearer it becomes, the clarity. The same thing too in the practice. You practice and you practice and you practice you begin to see the cessation. You begin to see the cessation, but every time you see from day one and day 100 and day 1,000, they are different. The, what is different is the clarity. A nature is always a nature. Impermanent is always impermanence. But the way you see the clarity that you experience is different and different and different and different. And you always think you've already seen it. You have experienced it. Oh, I have seen Anicca. Very clear. In your mind, it's very clear. Because in your mind, it's very clear because you have nothing to compare to before to this one. So this is the clearest you have. But know that around the corner, there's a clearer one than that. And around the another band, there's a more clearer one than that. That clarity, each clarity, higher and higher clarity, has a higher and higher impact on your understanding. That's the difference. So you practice and you practice. Now we go back to the insight level. Insight level number five. It's called the insight on the solution. Benga jnana. Only when you reach that benga jnana and when you have that benga jnana on a maturity site, you truly experience the impermanence. You truly understand and experience the impermanent. Impermanence become really a part of you with true clarity. You have to reach to that level. But at the same time, number four, you understand anicca. Number three, you understand anicca. Even number one and two, you sort of understand anicca. From reading the book, oh, I understood already what's the big deal about it through the science, through everything. But it's simply not the same. The impact that have on you, the way it impacts to change your life, to change the whole way of looking at things, not momentarily, in a very high degree, not permanent, because till you got to the area domain, it's not permanent yet. But 
it stays with you. As long as you keep practicing, it is with you. But if you stop practicing, it seems like a memory. You have to reach there to that level to truly experience with full clarity about impermanence, nicha. So, this one little instruction, incline your mind towards the cessation of all objects that you are engaging at that moment. It promotes higher concentration and it switches you into vipassana and be able to see the general characteristics of mind and matter, anicca and permanence at a lot shorter time spans. So may all of you be able to practice this Satipatthana Vipassana meditation with the mind inclining to the cessation of the phenomenon and discover with full clarity anicca as soon as possible. Sadhu, 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 Buddham, Bujemi. Dhammam, Bujemi. Sangam, Bujemi.